come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review podcast that comes your way every Saturday. Thanks for listening. We also hope that you'll head on over to our social medias where we're on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. We're on Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can reach us by email. Saturday Night Freak Show Yahoo.com. We're also on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Drop us a line. Leave us a comment. Hey, give us a star rating uh, wherever you found us uh, or a like. All of that stuff helps us get found by more like-minded people like yourself who are into the same strange and weird shit that we are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I know you're asking yourself this question. Who are these people who are going to be talking to you tonight? The internet radio superstars. Michaela. Sean. Holly. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... <laughs> Colin. <laughs> God damn it. I feel everyone looking at me, waiting for me to fuck it up. <laughs> We're all again, Sean. We can try to get this cue right. Yeah, <laughs> Colin. Colin, yes. what do we watch tonight? Uh, tonight we watched a movie called Blackula. Ooh, directed by who? Uh, William Crane. Mm-hmm. What and year? 1972. Ah. Mm. Uh, Starring... Uh, William Marshall mm-hmm. and Vanetta McGee and Thalmus Rasulola. Ah. Wow. These are great there, names. Did name. you practice pronouncing them? I've watched the trailer gotcha. a bunch of times. Okay. I'm like, that <laughs> is a name that sticks with me. Yeah. Thalmus Rasulola. <laughs> Rasulola. Yeah. I looked him up. He, uh, I think actually, unfortunately, most of the cast of this movie is dead. Yeah. Uh, Rasulala is dead. Me. William Crane is dead. William Crane, um, or not William Crane. William, Crane. William Crane's still, alive. William Crane's still alive. Marshall William Marshall is dead. Is dead. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, some of you may know William Marshall as the uh, king of cartoons on Pee Wee's Playhouse. Oh. Which he did for several years. Huh. Yeah. From Blackula to Pee Wee's Playhouse. Well, prior to this, though, he was a... uh, Not too different, really. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, he had done... uh, He was famously a Shakespearean performer. He had done... You don't say. (laughs) You don't say. (laughs) That is shocking. I believe it. He's he's shouting to the back of the theater of this whole movie. Mm -hmm. There's a scene when, you know, uh, later on in the movie where he's given like a eulogy or something. I'm like, that is, you know, that's Mm -hmm. he's given it with the Shakespearean uh, mm-hmm. the power. Apparently, he had played Othello in six different productions in his lifetime. I was going to say, if yeah. this man didn't play Othello. Yeah. <laughs> he wow. was called yeah. by one uh, contemporary critic the finest Othello of our time. Nice. Cool. Wow. So, bravo. It's high praise. Yeah. So, here we sit, having just watched Blackula. Blackula. Mm-hmm. All right. What do we think of that title? It's a, well, he's, he's deadlier than Dracula. He's Dracula's soul brother. Yeah. Yeah. It's basically Black Dracula. Mm-hmm. Yes. We no, we get it. it. Yeah. No, I understand. <laughs> yeah. I understand. I'm with you. It's no Dr. Acula <laughs> from Scrubs, but <laughs> it's, it's close. <laughs> Dr. Acula is the pretty Dr. genius. Dr. Acula. It's no I Blackenstein. <laughs> Blackenstein. Yeah. Well, all those came later. So are you guys, do you want to get into the history of, well, this is kind of, this movie is an intersection between two trends of the early 1970s. One is the modern vampire film, mm-hmm. and number two is the black exploitation film genre yes. which was born in the wake of Shaft which is a movie that came out the year prior in 1971 oh. where would you like to start uh, shut your mouth <laughs> talking about Shaft oh, uh-huh. have you ever seen Shaft isn't there a remake coming out really soon it's Another a sequel. One? sequel yes it is yes. a sequel, it's a sequel. and it's okay. a comedy it Okay. So yes. Yes, it is. I keep getting sponsored ads for it on great. Facebook, but I know nothing about it. <laughs> it looks awesome. This was a sequel to the the Sam Jackson remake. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Which was a serious movie mm-hmm. in two thousand. Right. This is a comedy. This is a comedy. Remake. I have not has, seen this. Oh, it looks great. <laughs> it's it's three gonna generations of Shaft. Yes. <laughs> so they got the original Richard Roundtree Shaft, then Samuel Jackson Shaft, and then like his son, and then oh, John really? Shaft Jr. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Oh. They're all that sounds shit. pretty awesome. You didn't see the trailer? No. Oh, we're going to watch it after this. Okay. It looks awesome. <laughs> it's going to be good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, 
Okay, so you want to go with vampire vampire movies at this time? And Wherever why? you want to start, I mean, Colin. Go, yeah. yeah, I mean, I feel like this is like the Colin Venn diagram of of, of genre, right? Yeah. Yeah. It is kind. Of, yeah, it, it really is. is. I was yeah. like, this, this is, is all you. Like, <laughs> this is everything Colin loves. <laughs> well, we have done quite a few vampire movies on this show. Mm-hmm. Uh, all chosen them. by Colin. <laughs> <laughs> Not true. I picked what we do in the shadows. That's, oh, that's very, very true. Yeah. I think I, I'm I think everything all else the was the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything that was Acula came yeah. from Colin. Yeah. Yeah. But you have to go back and look those episodes up for the time of your life. Mm-hmm. Um, so vampire movies and prior to this movie um, were all like period movies. All Christopher Lee. There's a lot. Yeah. A lot of Christopher <laughs> Lee through the 50s and the 60s. Right. But then. Sometime in the late 60s, there comes this magical, like, television program called... Dark Shadows. You are correct. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> it's always, it always comes back to Dark Shadows. It all always. comes back to Dark Shadows. Always. Because as far as I can tell, and somebody will tell me if I am incorrect here, Dark Shadows is, like, one of the first examples of a vampire uh, waking up in a modern setting. Okay. Yeah, that's where it came from? I think so because I mean I'm like I'm tracking this back and I'm like where Wait, the hell when did Dark Show start? I think it's sixty six. Okay, yeah, okay. so it is before Dracula A D nineteen seven whatever we had just watched a couple yeah. months ago. Right. Okay. Dracula A D nineteen seventy two. Yes, well that, that was, was part of a cycle. See, okay. like this is what I'm I'm driving at. Like there was a cycle, an explosion of vampire in the modern day movies that all came and I, I'm I'm trying to figure out if it was it, like what was the inciting movie? Or, you know, was it the popularity of the Dark Shadows TV show, which also had a movie called House of Dark Dark Shadows with the cast uh, from the sh- the soap opera was made in 1970, right? Mm-hmm. So I think this is probably how this tracks because somewhere around then you also get a movie called Count Yorga Vampire uh, starring Robert Quarry. And I think that is actually the first movie that takes a guy in a cape and puts him in modern day Los Angeles where he's walking around in the streets of, you know, of L.A. Cool. <laughs> where in that time it was normal to walk around in a cape. On the streets of LA. Why do they always put them in capes? This is the thing about this era. They're all in capes. Why not? Yeah. They just wear, you come into the modern day and you still wear a cape. I yeah. mean, yeah. isn't it supposed to have the functionality of being able to cover yourself from the sun? That's why you have it, right? I think and so. when you Safety spread net. it out, it looks like big bat wings. Yeah. 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 But in case you need to cover up from the sun, yeah. you got it. I mean, I guess can. a hoodie would work. And you can bring your victim <laughs> you know? in, you know, and do that, that arm sweep where you bring the victim yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dracula's got style. Mm-hmm. Well, that was so that uh, a style that lends itself to the black exploitation film, I think. Does it the, the cape? cape? I think so. <laughs> Does Superfly wear a cape? He should have. I don't think he did, but it seems like he should. Could fit. Some, yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, so there's a, a rash of these like m- vampire in the modern era movies. I think uh, you know. So uh, um, Count Yorga Vampire is the first one. There's and somewhere it's a fish in like, out of water, except it's a bat out of hell. Do you guys know the Night Stalker? <laughs> Only from you mentioning it many times. Yeah. Are you serious? Darren McGavin is the Night Stalker. Oh yeah, Carl yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a TV movie yes. around like this 71, 72. Mm-hmm. He's Dude chasing hat, a modern yeah, vampire. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's got like that. the blue. Yeah, yeah, suit, yeah. The blue the straw suit, hat. The or straw hat. Yeah. Yeah, and out of this comes uh, Blackula. Now Blackula. Uh, comes to us because Shaft had been a big hit the year before. And that basically was like the first major studio, like black uh, um, fronted movie directed by a black director starring, you know, with a black uh, lead, leading man. And that was the black James Bond. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, Shaft was referred to. Right. And so then it just goes kind of logically to assume that the next after James Bond, uh, Dracula. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, why where not? my mind goes. <laughs> I mean, right in one to the other. When you're going for the great cinematic, well, sure. okay, James so there Bond, might be Dracula. something there though, because I mean, like when you're thinking of probably 1970, I just want Daniel Craig there, there is now. a Venn diagram there. <laughs> there is some overlap to that. I that, think. Like people who are in the James Bond movies end up in Dracula. Mo- well, Dracula is in a James Bond movie. I don't, no, I'm saying Lee Dracula and James Bond share some qualities. I think that like, overlap. Swap. They're suave, yeah. They're suave. They can yeah. seduce women with like with minimal effort. Just look, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> they, the thrall or yeah. whatever that yeah. they both seem to have. 
They're yeah. always sharply Although dressed. Although I never saw yeah. James Bond do this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Although it would have been great. That's a maybe, hand maybe, gesture. Maybe of... Jimmy Bond did that, <laughs> they but have, never they James Bond. They have a bag Bond. of tricks, if yes, you will. Yes, that's very true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's they're, true. They're seductive ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As mm-hmm. They have a hideout of some sort. <laughs> a lair. Well, yeah. Where they bring yeah. their women. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to keep working. I'm going to I'm gonna mentally keep working on this Venn diagram. I'm, okay. I think there's okay. more there. Oh, yeah. There's always a Bond girl. There's always a Dracula girl. There you go. Sure, sure. It works. Yep. Yeah. They don't have, uh, well, yeah, they have what's a henchman. coffin yeah. for car, you know, like, yeah, he's got a cool car. He's always got a, cool I'm sorry. Coffin. Nobody ever had a pimped out <laughs> coffin. Like with, uh, there was never a Q or a M. Why a, not? Why? Uh, uh, I was going to uh, yeah. uh, 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 say, I was just about to say Q and Renfield. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Renfield's just like a job. Missiles. That's all. Yeah, we've that's had all. missiles to your coffin, yeah. <laughs> just in case. I want this movie. I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah let's, let's just go like it. Black Dracula Bond. Yeah. <laughs> let's do yes, that. Yes. Idris Elba play him too. Yes, that's yes. why uh, everyone. It's too late it. for uh, Snoop Dogg to get out of that. Action. No, I right. don't want Idris that movie. He had bones. He had his sort of horror movie. He had that. That was his chance. That was his chance. I don't want Snoop in this. Yeah, I want yeah. Idris Elba. <laughs> yes, that would be amazing. Mm-hmm. There you go. Oh, and let's not forget uh, Eddie Murphy basically played a black Dracula in Vampire in Brooklyn. Is this uh, okay? So there's black exploitation, which mm-hmm. then gave rise to stars like uh, uh, Pam Greer, mm-hmm. uh, Fred Williamson, Fred Williamson, football yeah, player. Yeah. 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 Um, or sorry, yeah, it was Fred Williamson? Was he? Jim Brown was a football player. He had yeah. a bunch of roles. Jim Fred, Brown. Yeah, Fred Williamson was. Was he also football? <sighs> I mean, he looked like a football player just in his build. I don't know if he actually played football, but you know, like martial artists, like Jim Kelly and all this. You know? Yeah, yeah. But he was a big one. He directed as well, didn't he? Jim Kelly? No, Fred Williams. Yeah, Fred, yeah. Fred Williamson yes. was like a industry unto yes. himself. Yeah, yes. he was like the cooler Tyler Perry. Yes, where he would make his own <laughs> movies. And Way star. cooler. Yeah. I mean, it's not hard to be cooler than yeah. Tyler Perry. Right. <laughs> I know. Like, look how the dynamic has changed. <laughs> um. So, but this is, I think, and Michaela will have to correct me if I'm wrong here, because you mm. just watched uh, a documentary on oh, Shudder yeah. yes. called Horror Noir. Yes. Uh, a, was, is Fred Williams still alive? Fred Williams, yes. And B, was he in noir, uh, Horror Noir? No. I feel like No, he, I don't think no? so. But I don't think he did a lot of horror. Not movies. a lot of horror. He was like it's a more, Western and action. Yeah, guy. that's very like, true. Uh, that's what very was true. it? The ha- was Hammer? Hammer? <sighs> They don't touch on everything. They touch on the like the big points, like they sure. touch on Sugar Hill, uh, Blackula, um, Get Out, obviously a lot, um, Candyman, The Craft. Okay. So it, mm-hmm. and then uh, actually the people under the stairs they talk about quite at length too. Really? So yeah, mm-hmm. a lot of freak show territory in that documentary. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's wonderful. Yeah. But I'm thinking, like, was this the first? I mean, obviously, uh, Night of the Living Dead mm-hmm. set uh, some right. kind of template for a black leading man in a horror Correct. film, and then the black exploitation uh, films. I mean, it is you know because uh, the the fellow who directed this, uh, William uh, Crane, he's uh, black also. Mm-hmm. So this is, and the producers obviously are just, uh, you know, following the money train. Right. right. If Shaft is a huge hit, then we can, uh, black people go to see movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's give them a bunch of movies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. And so that's why you got, like, I mean, a string Shocking of concept. amazing. I know. Yeah. Right. I know. <laughs> right. So, um, yeah, I mean, that, uh, I'm trying to think, like, what, you know, the Sugar Hill, mm-hmm. Blackenstein, mm-hmm. uh, Dr. Black, and Mr. Hyde. Mm-hmm. Uh, I imagine I, they thought it was all hoity toity, high class white people that went and saw movies, and then these came out, and they're like, holy shit, black people see yeah. movies. <laughs> well, and one of the things you learn in watching this documentary, a lot of those movies were, the black exploitation ones, were mostly made by white people, mm-hmm. almost entirely by white people. Yeah, you know, Jack Hill is like a huge. Oh yeah, director. Jack Hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, William Crane even talks about the documentary how like he was the only black crew member on Blackula. That's it. <laughs> like they're like yeah. one thing at a time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Take it easy there, man. Come on. Yeah, Whoa. calm down. Yeah. Well, he Whoa. tells a story on that documentary, which is interesting. That the um, so I'm assuming he had like a white um, a pr- assistant director, mm-hmm. and there's a club scene in this movie. And uh, it, fabulous. the yeah. assistant director is charged with like, you know, putting the people in their crowd control, crowd control. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so he paired up all the white couples and paired up the black couples. Mm-hmm. 
you know, just like, and so William Crane saw this and was like, no, oh, you're going to mix these people up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was yeah. him, you know, saying. Yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Basically, like, uh, you know. Uh, I, I really loved that, like, the first, some of the first characters we see in this movie is a gay biracial couple. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's yeah. That was, I was really surprised by that, honestly. Mm-hmm. I was too. Yeah. For 1972. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like, I mean, obviously they're cheating them as the comedic you know it's uh, right they're a joke to be exploited that's for sure yeah over and over and over and over again it's very true Mm -hmm. yeah it's very true yeah using words that uh and we do not uh we do not use anymore yeah Yeah. well Mm -hmm. but that's also the thing that i think you have to take into account whenever you go back in into these films oh yeah you know you can still enjoy them Right. You just, you know, you have to see them as a, like, right. Remember, they're a product, and of that's their time. and that's yeah. why yeah. it kind Very of much. gets a pass. Like, yeah. obviously, if this movie were made in 2018, 2019, oh we would be like, "What the <laughs> fuck?" Yeah. But I mean, like, I mean, I feel like we all kind of expected there would be some things we don't normally see anymore. Yeah, Absolutely, I forgot that that was going to happen. So yeah. when it happened in this movie, I was like, "Oh Jesus!" All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I forgot where this movie like, came from. Yeah. The time yeah. it came just from, the casualness. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I think yeah. it, it is just the casualness. The, yeah. How did you forget the time this came from? <laughs> the, by the title was, alone. Yeah. No, just, no, I just it. Yeah, it's I had, like the most seventies movie of it, all it, time. Had we not, I don't know. When, had we Funky not base uh, gone back to this time? Yeah, we saw Dolomite. Yeah. We're, no, I'm just recently. Oh, I'm like I I forgotten about it recently in our string of movies we watched, and now we're going back to that time. I'm just like, oh, oh, this is where we're at at this point. Yeah. Did, did Mac and me that. fry your brain? <laughs> it, I mean, because yeah, that that was a like, void. You're like, I don't know where I am or what time right, it is anymore. It's, it really is. It's I can't pinpoint that down. Yeah. I'm just like, what is the time at this? This fucking weird aliens looking at me. That movie really fucked me up. Yeah. Holy shit! The whole experience Ugh. was like a black hole. Yeah. It was yeah, odd. Showing it's nice to get back on track with Blackula. Thank yeah. you, thank you, Colin. I, like, it really puts me back into like, all right, I know yeah. where we are now. When or, I went when I went home after we watched Mac and. Me. I watched um I watched a YouTube compilation of every time Paul Rudd brought that yeah. clip. <laughs> it's yeah. great. It's yeah. like twenty minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Every time. It's great. Mm-hmm. We have to post that comment. Yeah, I guess uh, yeah. I, well I posted uh, oh, yeah. some of it, but uh, mm-hmm. I don't not the Paul Rudd thing. I'll, have oh, to post, the Paul Rudd post thing. the Paul Rudd thing. Yeah. It's great. That's funny. It's great. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh Blackula begins in Transylvania. Are you shocked? No, I mean, no. I'd, I'd be shocked if it didn't start there. Yeah, honestly. yeah. Same. I had no idea where this movie was going. I didn't know because uh, I didn't look anything up with it. I didn't know we were going to go back to L.A. quote unquote present time. So I had no oh, idea where. Really? We were going. No, I didn't know. I, I didn't know anything about Blackula. I didn't know when it was going to take place. I didn't know if we were going to stay in like the uh, dark mm-hmm. ages and mm-hmm. have that whole thing go. I uh, that, I'm very yeah. glad it went to where it went. Uh, but I didn't know. Can you imagine how much racism and stuff there would be if they stayed in the right? I mean, there was a lot of racism in that very brief moment. Yeah. Dracula is yeah. a racist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, he really is. I saw this like ten years ago, I think, and but I didn't remember the beginning of it at all. No, no. Uh-huh. I remembered yeah. after he got to L.A. I remember right, a lot uh, yeah. of it. But... That's the. I think that's the the scene where everyone's mm-hmm. just like, "Oh, I forgot about this part." Mm-hmm. I forgot about. I mean, like uh, the Dracula. I like that, that Dracula. Present, yeah. yeah? I, I like the uh, his the whoever portrayed him. Mm-hmm. Like I like, yeah, I thought he was pretty good. Like especially his little monologue he gives after he locks up uh, uh, Blackula and he's talking to her, Luva. Oh yeah, yeah, I like his thing because mm-hmm. he's fucking bleeding from the eyes in that moment. I'm just like, this is creepy. Like, I like his this. Screams will keep you company. <laughs> yes, I like, yeah. I like this yeah. guy. He's doing good. Yeah. Yeah, he's. Uh, I mean, Count Dracula says, "I'm like, how does this? He doesn't doesn't have the cape." Blackula later has a cape, but right. like, you didn't he's, see Dracula in the cape. No, but he's, but he's, he's got the suit he's, on, he's though. Purple yeah. and he's got like a purple suit. Yeah, yeah it's that's, pretty, that's, it's pretty that's, pimp. That's, that's, that's my Dracula. White haired Purple Dracula. suited Dracula. <laughs> that's that's what I like. Yeah. yeah. And he's entertaining uh, Blackula. Blackula's actual name is Mama Walde. Yes. Uh, he is an African prince who is visiting Europe to raise, uh, um, I think, uh, awareness of the... He's trying to abolish the slave trade in Africa and thinks if he can get uh, nobles in Europe to his cause, then, uh, you know, he'll have some pressure, you know, uh, that he can apply. But uh, Dracula turns out to be a racist, undead vampire. <laughs> With, he doesn't have. Uh, I was kind of disappointed that you know he didn't have like the gypsies. Or the, he's got like dudes in in uh, like waiters. Right. He's got mm-hmm. he's got Bond 
henchmen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Orton snaps his, his finger. You're yeah, right, and... to come in. One of yeah. them is Mel Brooks, but, you know, they come in and they're mm-hmm. beating up people and trying to subdue them. Yeah, yeah. it is kind of weird. I got to say, like, I know this is technically a black exploitation movie, but, like, it didn't go as far as I thought it would in a no, lot of the black exploitation. Like, mm-hmm. like, the fact that it opened with them being, like, these dignitaries and, like, making this kind of negotiation, I was like, all right, that's doesn't seem very exploitive because I, 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 I was like oh like worst case scenario they're like slaves that get like turned or something right yeah. like that's yeah. like if you're gonna go really deep into like the exploitation angle like it would that's be so the, much more uncivilized that's and, the Quentin Tarantino Blackula yeah exactly right. like but what's, yeah. what's more in, in, in but they're in a position of power yeah right. well yeah, that, yeah. I think that's like maybe like the bigger turn of it it's just like they're taking like black royalty at this mm. point and mm. turning them into their enslaving yeah, well, them. I mean but if but I suppose that is the analog if you're trying to make a count Dracula mm-hmm. you know black right. count Dracula right. analog right but they're like they're well spoken and they're well dressed and it's like for that to be how black people are being portrayed in a 70s exploitation movie is crazy you know what I'm saying like that yeah. to start there is is really interesting I think mm-hmm. I mean when you say that I don't know that there's you know uh, a character like were they doing like because uh, the original the way that I understand it the original version of this movie mm. uh, Black Hill was supposed to be a character named Albert Brown mm. and I believe it was when either I'm, I'm not sure whose input it was it was either William Crane or William Marshall said you know it's like well let's make this guy an African prince mm-hmm. give him an African name yeah. and so yeah. I think that orig- that opening scene comes from them uh from yeah. black people having an idea? Yeah. Imagine that. And tweaking <laughs> yeah. the, the script. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, that's the other thing, too. It's like when you look at Shaft, Shaft was uh, uh, based on a series of novels that had been already written, and Shaft's a white guy. Shaft's a white guy, yeah. I was going to yeah. say, yeah. But they, when they cast it, or sorry, when they, when they were making the movie... I can't remember if they hired Gordon Parks uh, first and he said, you know, let's make uh, Shaft black or if that was just in the zeitgeist Mm. and some executive somewhere obviously, you know, said. And so, uh, you know, then they made that character black. But this one, I think, was written from the ground up, obviously, with that title as being like, okay, this is going to be, you know, a black uh, centric movie, you know, from the get go. I guess like when I hear black exploitation movie, like I assume the worst as far as like taking advantage of a minority culture and i i didn't think this movie did that as much as i expected that's a good thing like i'm saying that's a good thing like like, it was more respectful than i thought it was going to be you know i I like that like if he's gonna if he is going to be like the black dracula like Mm -hmm. that he comes from a place of royalty it feels like yeah yeah Yeah. it it makes sense like that's a great place for it to come from yeah Yeah. that's what it feels like uh, Dracula comes from mm-hmm. like he, you know he's a count he's there's there's a royalness to it he lives in a fucking castle mm-hmm. like that's that's where they should come from so it makes sense yeah, that never, they would do that too bad we never get to see his actual home oh, right that'd be so cool well that's what I thought because I didn't know I'm like are we gonna go back to there is he gonna be like ruling over people as mm-hmm. Dracula as Blackula yeah. but there we go because yeah. Count Dracula gives him the name you will have yes. my name Blackula mm-hmm. has Blackula yeah and then we cut to the modern day. There it goes. Right, right. <laughs> After an awesome title sequence. <laughs> and awesome title fun. sequence. Cool, Fantastic. Funk That's music. a great title sequence. Some bats really flying like around. It's like red, black, and white. And like the red is used sparingly to like represent blood. And like the type flows into blood. Fucking, and, and the bats following your things around. And the, and and the and bat. Humping the, <laughs> yeah, I know it's sucking the blood, but it's like humping the No, it is. Cell. I was like, that is like, yeah. that bat is like straight up raping her. Yeah. It really is. But I like how the bats also running into walls. Yeah. 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 It's like, oh, I can't get through this little tiny space because yeah. my giant wings yeah. I have to it's go like, around what, I mean this is it's the, really the, great the, uh, the Pink Panther cartoons yeah. or something yeah, like yeah, that yeah, like yeah. it feels like something like that you're coming out yeah. of like the 60s with the like circles it feels and, like yeah. Yeah. It, it's not uh, there's no way it's a Saul Bass design but it looks right, like it feels, someone imitated like it Saul like Bass yeah, design yeah. someone really likes Saul Bass yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's very good I really like it mm-hmm. It was the yeah, 60s, it's 60s it's fun. Uh, you know, it was yeah. an experimental time with the mm-hmm. uh, title sequences. Yeah. Yeah. We trusted mm-hmm. our audiences to have patience to get to the movie. Yeah. You know? yeah. Like, like, but also, we're <laughs> going to entertain you with the credits. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. The uh, movie then follows a trope of uh, vampire movie. Um, well, let's see, again, I think this was maybe also a Dark Shadows invention. The idea, because the idea that uh, the, vamp- the vampire 
comes into the modern day and finds the reincarnation mm. of his lost love. Right. Like, I think that's from Dark Shadows, too. Like, because that's is not it? Dracula. This is, also, this is also like a mummy thing. Yeah, true. It feels, but like, yeah. it feels like a mummy thing, yeah. But as far as, uh, you're right, right? Yeah. yeah. They just, they stole that and grafted it onto the vampire Right, that's what it feels like, because that's, isn't that, that's the whole mummy thing. But that's it's not like, in those 30s Dracula movies, and it's not in the, the Christopher Lee ones either in the 50s yeah. and 60s. No. It, like, specifically comes from, it feels like, I mean, uh, unless I can think of something else, uh, uh, Dark Shadows. I did miss one thing when I was saying uh, that Shaft was the first uh, big black exploitation movie. There was one before that. There was a smaller movie that became a hit. And that was Sweet Sweetback's Badass Song oh, yeah. by uh, Melvin Van Peebles. You've Anybody? mentioned this before. You've mentioned okay. this before. I think that was the first black exploitation okay. movie. There was another uh, black exploitation. Well, it wasn't really a black exploitation horror movie. Uh, Ganja and Hess. Mm-hmm. I have not heard of this one. Yep. Uh, with Dwayne Jones from uh, Night of the Living Dead. Mm-hmm. I've seen it. It's a very dry movie. I mean, like all the other black exploitation movies are more fun than this one. Mm-hmm. It's very serious. Spike Lee remade it as of the course. sweet blood of De Jesus. Okay. None, okay. none okay. of what you just said surprises me at all. <laughs> no. He would take something cool and make it uninteresting. I didn't see that one. I watched the trailer. It was exactly. The you did. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not saying that, you know, I know that there's a high regard. He has for a that history movie, of doing that, doesn't he? Yeah. That's true. <laughs> old boy looking yeah. at you, old boy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Stick to your original movies, man. Yeah. So uh, Mama Walde now re-resurrected uh, in modern day, 1972, Los Angeles. Uh, then the movie kicks into a gear where you're basically experiencing the kind of the tropes of the vampire movie. He meets a woman who is the resurrection of his long lost love, Lula? Lula? Luva. 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 Like Lava. Spelled like Lava. And we have uh, various people running in opposition to him, led by Van Helsing. Oh, sorry. Mm-hmm. Doctor. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Doctor yeah. Thalmus Rasulala. Just say that a couple of times. Thalmus Rasulala. Thalmus Rasulala. Thalmus Rasulala. Who is the, uh, what was his position? Because that cracked me up. When said <laughs> he was like was. a no, no. Sci- <laughs> uh, scientific. Detective division or uh, investigation, uh, scientific it? investigation division or something like that. So is he a cop? N- nope. I feel like he's more like I a feel forensic. Like, inspector. I was like, I feel like, like today he'd be forensic. He's, yeah. forensic <laughs> inspector. he's like crime scene, crime scene inspector. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's does a criminologist. It, basically, does he? Does um, that's what I'm figuring. Out. Does he work in the police department? I think he, he seems works. To. I think he works. Yeah, I think it's part of it. Yeah. I think he works like with them. Like yeah. it's definitely separate. He's it's, right there in the yeah. In the muck of it, like with the detectives, then he can have access to the morgue. I think it's does, like, the equivalent is yeah. like they have criminologists, or they did in like the seventies and eighties and everything. Where mm. I don't think they're not exactly police, but they're basically the same thing. But they are called criminologists. And then eventually, cops got wise and said, "You know, we should just have a department, right?" And yeah. then just kind of put it all together. <laughs> I think yeah. so. That feels like the equivalent. Yeah. Well, he uh, was creepy. Yeah, he was. Was he? <laughs> what? he I mean, he's not, the he's, chef he's just, of this movie. He's, uh, I mean, I was sitting there thinking if this was made modern day, he'd be played by Sam Jackson. Right. But I just felt like he was hitting on me in certain places. He was just way. creepy. And everyone else. Like, he had a... He was he's smooth. Not cre- he's, he's being smooth, smooth though. Yeah. Right. You're that. He's not smooth. being creepy. He's smooth. Was he? Wasn't he? He thinks he is. <laughs> the movie thinks he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So That part when he's, he? like, digging up the grave and he kills the, the vampire and she's screaming and then he's all like, he's like hey, ah. baby. <laughs> he's like, was trying to calm her down. Yeah, he was, he was trying to calm her down and then he was getting a little too into right. it. It was he's creepy. Got, he's like, yeah, he's got a fetish that is happening yeah. here. Wow. Like, wow. Women in distress. Yeah, it was creepy. <laughs> Calm down, baby. He's going to start, tar- <laughs> He's gonna start ty- tying them to railroad tracks next thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Scream, baby. Mm, scream. Yes. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> he, he had to resist the urge to twirl his mustache at that moment. He was like keeping his hand down like, no, don't do it. Yeah. Don't do it. <laughs> well, these people all know Shit, each other. You here? In this uh, this little microcosm of Los Angeles, that's the thing that I like. I'm always kind of bummed about these movies, right? That when you think about it, uh, Blackula, uh, he's basically bitten by Dracula, mm-hmm. uh, locked in a coffin, and then spends, you know, whatever, 150 years yes. or something like that uh, in the dark. And then one day they open the coffin and he pops out in the modern day. And then 
And then he acclimates to it pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is like ever fine right off the bat. <laughs> about these movies. He's cool with cars and television and all that shit and clubs. That's what I'm saying. How, how many movies? I brought this up in Dracula AD 1972. How many movies am I going to have to watch until we get like a montage of him walking on the street just like being in awe of everything? Yeah. yeah. And like, right. and like, like <laughs> everyone looking at him like he's the weirdo, but he's just right. kind of like, no, y'all are. Yeah, what's wrong here? Right. Like, well, yeah. uh, we need again, a shout of water scene. But again, we're in the seventies, so everything kind of just blends together. Yeah. Like, cool, that man's in a cape. Need, yeah. Awesome. We need that. We need that Captain America in Times Square scene. Yeah, really. exactly. But there, but there, but therein is the big differential from where he comes from to where he ends up. Whereas where he ends up is seems like a more accepting of a dude walking down the street in a cape. But yeah. still, he doesn't know what fucking television is he, or right, any modern is, he technology. Feel yeah. This is like, weird. But he's also a vampire. And so that's where we're giving him the benefit right. of the doubt because it's a vampire movie and all this other stuff is so like he's irrelevant like, to right. the plot. If nothing else, he's like, well, I'm a vampire, so I'm pretty accepting of everything else that's going on around like, me. Yeah, <laughs> like when he gets a police car is chasing him alone should put him into yes, a fucking right. station. Yeah. Should, this when he gets, should be a lot weirder. Too. When yeah. he gets hit by the cab, he should yeah. be really scared of that cab. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. It's a motorized He's never seen coach. a car. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah. I, and this is like, I right. wish it, that yeah, these vampire movies be. would do yeah. that kind of stuff. The new Dark Shadows remake did a little bit, but he, it's still he, never as good as I want. You know that scene in Elf when Buddy Bruce comes to New York and is yes. like trying to figure shit out? Why can't it just a montage? We just need a fucking yes. montage. That's yes. all it takes. It yeah. doesn't have to be think, a lot. But does that inherently make your movie veer into comedy? It depends Which on how you handle you could it. Do Isn't, it serious? Yeah. Isn't this kind of supposed to be a comedy? No. I don't what? know that it is. No. <laughs> This doesn't, what? Uh, Explain yourself. Is it? I think there's elements we find funny about it now, just because of the time. But I don't think this was a comedy. Mm, maybe you're right. It so you're feel it's, like the, it. the, it's the camp factor. Mm. Yeah, of it is. Uh, outdated '70s fashion mores and all this other yes. stuff that now seems like yeah. wood paneled walls in your yeah. house. But you could use his uh, lack of knowledge about modern times as like tip offs to the normal people in the movie that something's not right right mm-hmm. you know right. he doesn't understand yeah. something they're like well that's weird you know like yeah, that's you how could, you do it seriously you could do it in a minor way that could uh, make things feel off yeah or you could do it in the major way where it's an Austin Powers montage <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly yeah. exactly <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, pumping, for some reason, pumping was, Nikes and shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or, well, did you see the Dark Shadows remake? I did not. No, I like, have never watched it. No. If I had not you watched are, the original, you were the, the only one. one. You this the has only actually one. happened. You were the I, only one that knows anything about Dark I've Shadows. I've never watched a second of Dark Shadows no, in my life. No, not one Ever. second. Yeah. No, don't care about Barnabas, whatever no. his fucking yeah. name is. You guys aren't true horror fans. That's what it comes uh, to. Isn't that a, wasn't the show a soap opera? It's a soap opera. Yeah, but I mean, it's been remade and as a TV show, then it was, there's movies and then there's a remake movie and there's also it's like a huge yeah huge, it sounds like huge, too much yeah. to dive into i don't want to watch days of our eternal lives just yeah, of right, yeah i got a 90s version of it that's only like uh eight episodes <laughs> that's or like that. yeah too much <laughs> too much to explore colin i'm not diving into this no. okay well and in that's the, him, that, that johnny you. depp movie looked terrible well, so in yeah. that movie there is a comedic like montage yeah. of him like having to deal with like a mcdonald's sign <laughs> And you know, asphalt. Oh, it sounds like product placement. Car. Yeah. <laughs> asphalt, like and it's a, a lava road. lamp, like like hocus pocus, well, hocus like hocus blood yeah. sperm. Well, there was that there was, there was that horrible trailer moment where she said something about like, "Are you stoned?" And he was like, "Oh, they didn't stone me. They oh. whatever." It, that was yeah, terrible. Like that, just like, well, terrible. You turned me off to watching this movie. <laughs> yeah. I know. Oh, I was boy. hoping for like a serious Dark Shadows movie because I'm an idiot. <laughs> like every you know. <laughs> right, well, no. I suppose as soon as they said Tim Burton was doing it. Yeah. But I mean, I really like the the '90s version with uh, with Ben Cross because it's serious. Yeah, <clears throat> but and I was like, "Yeah, you're gonna make a serious Dark Shadows movie." No, no. you can't. What? Where do you live? Well, you can't his, bring, who the, would go watch? That? No one's gonna like, bring those elements to now and make them serious because no one will watch that. Mm-hmm. Except for you. Except for me. But you're like, uh, who would watch, you like, and five well, yeah, people. Yeah, but you would do it like the others or something, like some kind of serious, you, you know. Do it, it would have to yeah. be prestige television to work. Yeah. It would have to be. Yeah. That's what I'm oh, saying. That's nobody watched that. But, but what network owns that? Do you know? Uh, it's it's a MGM. it is a network, right? It's not like cable or anything, right? MGM Paramount. did the, the, the 90s one. I don't know who okay. did the old one. Mm-hmm. If it was, yeah. I don't know. No. It was on know. NBC. I, just, I feel like you were the only one with faith in Dark Shadows. I, That's yeah, very true. I think so. Because somebody <laughs> needs to resurrect it and bring it back. Okay, this oh, movie. I think it's time. Sorry, we're I talking think it's about it. time is gone. Yeah. 
Okay, so Black Yellow. Yeah. Um, we also have uh, Elisha Cook is in this movie. Anybody? Anybody? Elisha Cook. My God. He was the morgue uh, attendant in the corner. Uh, Same, with the hook. Okay. Yeah. Who you may cook have with seen the hook. in The House on Haunted Hill with Vincent Price. Uh, oh, it's been a while since I've seen that. Long time since I've seen that okay. one. I've, I've seen the new one. More, why? Yeah, well, yeah. More close, more, uh, more <laughs> lately than the you old big one. Chris Kattan fan. Uh, oh, huge! <laughs> <laughs> and he was also in uh, Salem's Lot. Anybody? Salem's Lot. I've actually never seen. I've never seen Salem's, 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 Salem's Lot. Lot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's hard to come by. Okay, but listen, I've never seen Salem's Lot either. I'm sorry. <laughs> you are on my side, listener. You have seen these movies. You Salem's recognize Lot's Elijah been out of print for a very long time. No, it's, it's hard to come back. by. What are you talking about? They just put it out like two years ago on Blu-ray. Yeah, you can find. I'm not going to buy a movie. I've never seen before, but you should because it's awesome. Well, sure, and I hear it's Toby well, Hooper. I've heard a lot of good things about. Yeah, that's he res- Toby Hooper's name only carries well, a little bit of weight for a couple of movies, and that's it. Yeah, well, that was a good one. But again, a modern vampire movie. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. So I got modern vampires, and I got Black Yellow. Somebody tell me something about this movie. What do you want to know? The about? music's awesome. The music's great. Yeah, it love is nonstop it, again, beautiful funk, and it I love is. It. And yeah, they stop to give you uh, musical moments in this movie, and they're very good. Oh, what the, the uh, name whenever of the band we never did. Find it's that it's not on there. It's like uh, whenever they were in the nightclub, I was like, yes, more of this. Yeah, please. Nice I wanted awesome. this, I wanted this whole movie to be in the nightclub. Yeah. It yeah, was great. They were there for a few scenes. Mm. It was nice. Everyone seemed like they were having so much fun yeah, too. Fun. I was like, I want to go hang out there. Well, plus, you get to meet Skillet. Mm-hmm. Skillet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is one strange dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He just wanted to get the Blackula's cape. Mm-hmm. Blackula doesn't I take the skillet. I yeah. get it. No. I'm He's trying to. I'm surprised he didn't kill Skillet. Mm-hmm. I know. He was in two mm-hmm. scenes and like that never went anywhere. Mm-hmm. Blackula's victims end up being, well, initially the cab driver who runs him over. Right. Um, and then. Uh, and, the ca- and the cab driver. Running down the hall in the morgue was probably the scariest part of this that movie. That was fucking freaky. <laughs> How come? Her, her, her crazy hair. She looks and crazy. She's like, yeah. The, they have like a makeup on her face that makes it all wild and the teeth are really she's big. Wild. And, and like she's, she's contacts and in just, too. Yeah. And just her, her yelling and everything. She's wow. like it's in slow motion. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's great. It's in slow motion, but like part. her performance was really over exaggerated. Yeah. So it's like that much creepier in slow it's motion. It's like a legit maniac running towards you. A maniac yeah. that's supposed to be dead. Yeah. Like, yeah. And I was expecting something yeah. more slow. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why so, but uh, apparently and then, young vampires are like the young zombies in Train to Busan, where they just like, Aah! like they're like, just, they but, cannot yeah. contain themselves. But when yeah, but when you see stuff like this, I'm always expecting like a slow a turn. You know, I'm always expecting the you know the dead person to sit up and yeah. then coming mm-hmm. after the person like, slowly behind them as they're not paying yeah. attention. Yeah. So to have her just bust through the door and then just start running towards this guy making mm-hmm. that noise. Creepy. Creepy as all get out. Creepy as fuck, man. Loved it. And it was like a really like brightly lit scene too, yeah. which I feel like a lot of vampire stuff is dark and in shadows mm-hmm. for obvious reasons. Yeah. But like this was just like fluorescent light and a vampire's coming at you. Yeah. yeah. It was creepy. It's strange what they do. Like, I mean, all vampire movies seem to do that thing where, um, you know, the vampire can pass as a human, right? Yeah. Uh, because they look like a, you know. And then whenever they vamp out, I'm using quotes. Somewhere they came up with that. Was that Buffy? I don't know. Vamping out. Probably. It feels like it, yeah. Yeah. There's a face change that happens. The bone structure gets uh, changed. But in 1972, they didn't have the uh, latex prosthetic so that we do now. They just had hair. Yeah, it was like it's almost werewolf-like. Yeah, what is going on with that? So Hairy cheeks. Describe what he looks like, yeah. He he looks pretty normal when he's just kind of like, uh, uh, we'll call him Count Blackula. But, yeah, <laughs> just a suave black man. Right, yeah. But then, like, when he turns, he gets a little greener. Uh, his eyes, around his eyes, get a little darker. And his the shadowing comes in, and he grows hair just across his cheekbones. Yeah, it's like cheekbone mutton chops. And his yeah. and his eyebrows grow massive. Yeah, they grow bigger. And they, they connect to his afro. Yeah. Does his afro It made me bigger? uncomfortable. Yeah. I didn't like it. No, I it, didn't either. Yeah, it feels like it gets more, like, defined in the widow's peak of of, like... Yeah, very Dracula, early Dracula, yeah. like the very early Dracula, Widow's Peak, mm-hmm. right, really dark right there. It feels like that becomes more pronounced. But there's a side, the pieces at the side, like connect to his yeah, eyebrows. Eyebrows. To the he didn't side. quite have a unibrow, but I mean, no, it was almost. But yeah. yeah, certain things connect, and again, hairy cheekbones and whatnot, and very sweaty. 
Very, very sweaty. sweaty. Very sweaty as always. Which yeah. we can always imagine that, or only well, yeah, imagine that it's he's probably very wearing, hot. It's probably a fucking wool suit he's wearing. Oh god, yeah. It's that it. is the yeah. heaviest yeah. suit that you could wear on film. And you know that shirt's like fucking polyester. Yeah, and there's just that hot lights breathe. everywhere. Yeah. Oh my god, it it could not have been fun to film that. Well, it looks like in the sequel, which is called Scream Blackula Scream, Does that they scream. try to define that look even more with like grease paint or something. Yeah, did you see that? We yeah, he, yeah, he does mm-hmm. look a little. It's a little more. Uh, uh, it feels like a little more over the top, like a little more like heavy. Like, yeah, go for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He is a fucking vampire. Yeah, yeah. I thought he was like a fairly commanding presence, but I suppose that's what you get from casting. I mean, they cast well in this. Movie. They did. <clears throat> I would agree. He's a very. He's tall. He's got a presence. He's very tall. He's got that voice. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, he's very commanding. Um, yeah. Uh-oh. Right now, Michaela has reached for the Wall of Fame. It's, it, no, it was just uh, something I wanted to communicate to you off mic. Cause I was gonna oh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> we have mail. Oh, we okay. Just got mail. oh okay. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so just wanted to remind you before uh, You know we what get... they say the, about the mail? It never fails. <laughs> That's right. It That's what I heard on Blue's Clues, tail. right? Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Of course it's away. from Blue's Clues. <laughs> yes. It even happens live during the show. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so, uh, Blackula makes his way through the cast. Basically, uh, Thalmas Rasulula is a sharp, you know, cookie. He's on to like vampires. You know how he knows? I don't know. Bite, oh, marks. bite marks in the neck and, you know, that kind of stuff. That's just, so that's, he's like, that's starting just to meant research. vampires from day one. Yeah. The, no the corpse hadn't been embalmed, but it was all drained of blood and right. just the standard vampire attack signs. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, I suppose. Standard vampire. Well, it is at this point in time when we watch, when we go back and watch these movies, you have that kind of like ear ahead of it. Of course. Because you've seen this stuff a thousand times. But I have to assume that audiences in 1972 had seen it a bunch also, Mm -hmm. you know. But now it is like you're kind of checking off, like, then this happens, and this happens, and this happens. And the, uh, like major thing that's different about it is you're watching like a primarily black cast uh, do it, right? Mm-hmm. You know, but it's still like a, a very similar plot. It's just funkier. Yeah, very much, much funkier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was it at the end when they're in the warehouse and there's like all the vampires coming out yeah. from the shadows? Was the band one? Of, was the band in there? I don't. I thought that the. I thought that the it, band was... It would have been cooler them. if it was. I, I don't think it was. Are you sure? It, I think it was all the... It feels like the the couple from the beginning had brought a bunch of stuff... Like, stuff we didn't see. They brought a bunch of stuff back to the warehouse. Yeah. I feel like all his people from the beginning came back. Yeah. Well, I think it's the... You know, each one of these vampires is going out there and, like, you know, producing more and more... Right. Yeah, I got that, but I, I could have sworn that... Maybe I didn't. The singers from the band either. were some of the vampires. Yeah, They're I mean, always... I can't say for uh, officially that mm. it wasn't them. I don't mm. think it was, but uh, maybe not. I'm know. all for it if it was. That yeah. would have been like a nice little thing, but I don't think. Uh, like he just made his way at some point to like, hey, yeah. you guys are cool. And then yeah. he just took them all. Yeah. That would have been cool. Because I'm like, I like this band. I want to listen to band. them forever. <laughs> I like them. <laughs> Let's bring them with. Everybody's like that kind of blue-faced vampire. Right. And it, you, and this is the blue-faced vampire in this. It would have been better if they had continue on as the house band yes. as vampires. Yes. <laughs> done that every night. That's, That's a, what I want for yes. them. Oh. Disco Dracula. I was going to say, yes. how awesome would have been if it wasn't a dress, though? Like, so we're in the club one time, you see them performing normally, and then a couple things happen. We right. come back to the club, and they're just still performing, but they're all vampires now. Oh, yes. Like, how awesome love would it. that have been? Dude. Dude, want I it. think that'd be great. No, there is a movie called like no, is it old Dracula? Or Disco Dracula. There is some that might actually <laughs> Disco have Dracula. Yeah, it's got David I'm... Niven in it. Shit. And I think maybe it's either it may have both titles. I think oh, I shit. saw it. It was called Old Dracula, but they might not, be also not a Disco compelling Dracula. title. No, yeah. Disco Dracula. Yeah, yeah. Disco Dracula. Yeah, I'm down for that. Yeah, less funk, it. more disco. They better have an original uh, song if it's going to be I called want the that. Funk version of it. The disco wasn't there. Wait, 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 wait. Maybe it is a song 
called Disco Dracula. Probably. I hope so. Somebody's going to have to if YouTube this. we get this. Disco Duck. It was Disco yeah. Duck. Was yeah. Yeah. We can have Disco we, Dracula. We, yes, we, we have talked about Disco Duck at length before, right. but yes. I mean, there has to, when we there, did uh, Dracula 80, 1972, do we look up like a I think we record? did. Like, I f- there was like a 45 familiar. that was I feel like, like Disco yeah. Dracula. For as many genres as they've, as they've covered in music, <laughs> since music's inception, there is a... Disco Dracula. Well, Disco touched somewhere. everything. Yes. Disco yeah. hit whatever it could because it was dying so quickly. Right, they in were its like, very short period of time. Yeah, let's latch on everything. to everything. Yeah. Yeah. So I believe it. It's out there somewhere. Yep. It's fantastic. We can make it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Somewhere I have disc on a compact disc the soundtrack <laughs> to Blackula. As you should. Yeah, you remember those? Good soundtrack. I do. Yeah. I, do. I was yeah. meaning to bring it out. Yeah, drop them on, on the, the floor and they're here. ruined forever. Yep. Yeah. Remember them. Yeah, that's very good. That way, now we have <laughs> the digital stuff. It's all. It's much better. The digital. Can't drop that on the floor. All right. Yeah. Um, so uh, Dracula sets his sight on this woman who is the reincarnation of his long lost love, mm-hmm. and the romance. And she's all for it. That happens there. Did you guys? What was your feeling on this? Because basically, I don't know. I just I didn't get that there was a whole lot of a character there. It was basically like. Uh, you are the you know reincarnation of uh, Luva. Luva. Everyone's yeah. very accepting of yeah. his explanation of what's going on. Yeah, her he's, especially. Now I like, don't. They don't lend it over to any sort of power that he has over her. It doesn't feel like which no, they yeah. should. Which they should. Because like, he, he even had like yeah. his eyes flash or something, and then but he, yeah, he even makes it a point to be like, you have to come by choice. Well, that's what I'm saying. But like, that's why it doesn't feel like there's a power because yeah. he his whole thing is like it has to be by your will. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm just gonna fucking leave. But didn't toward the end, like when she's wandering around, like toward the end, the cops like end up using her yeah. to try and trap uh, Black. She's in like a trance. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I know. I agree. It doesn't make sense. But before yeah. that, there's like these awkward scenes where, like, after yeah. she clearly knows that he's a vampire. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like then they go and hang out with her friends. It's always weird to me to see yeah. like a guy in a cape like hanging out at the nightclub and sitting down like you know hey have sh- some champagne with us so yeah, I'd love to French you know. yeah. yeah you're my wife from two centuries ago right. I know you feel it too and she's basically like well kind of it's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah yeah sure yeah. Yeah. I get it, you know. What? No. <laughs> Do you think maybe they, they think because of the way he's dressed, he's rich, so they're just like, sure, whatever you say, right, man. Right, the rich eccentric. <laughs> yeah. They'll just yeah. let it go. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. not Thalmus or Rasulala, because he's like, you know, there's something, that man is the vampire. Yeah. You know? yeah. He's yeah. that kind of guy. And his girlfriend. Yeah. You know, they're like right But on. he's too busy being like creepy. Yeah. To, to yeah. You're hung up on this creepy thing. He was so creepy. <laughs> he was I'm a sorry, creepy. I'm sorry, he's smooth. He's smooth. No, creepy. He's very smooth. It's a matter of reception. Yeah. Yep. He's the hero of our tale. That's right. The hero, Thalmas Rasulullah, saves the day from... Actually, that's you not know, even true. He gets it? bitch slapped real hard, doesn't he? Yeah. He gets, <laughs> like backhanded. Well, yeah, but that's going to happen because Dra- uh, Blackula is like super powered. But like that's... He got off easy compared to everyone else. Just getting backhanded once. Sure. I don't know. Blackula takes down the cops. Mm-hmm. Breaks yeah. necks. Gets shot by the cops. A lot. A bunch. Like a lot real, of cops point blank comments. range too. It was real close. That's the thing about this though is I, I feel like Dracula is supposed to be a villain. I don't. I didn't. I never really like felt that way about this one. I don't. Yeah. I mean, he should be. You but know. I don't yeah. Think they're like I was. I think they're going more towards like Black and being a hero in this. Movie. I was like, he's just trying to live his life. I know. Man. I was like, maybe let just be. let him go. Yeah. Like he found his wife. Yeah, she I seems. Think, she I seems think, to be into it. Like yeah. I think they could. Yeah. yeah, they could just let him go. Yeah, and he'd be fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like he's got right? his wife, and he doesn't have like an overarching plan to like you know rule drain the world. The- no, yeah. Yeah. he, he doesn't give a fuck. He's gonna eat some yeah. people, sure. <laughs> and I that's mean, fine. you know, but that's evil, and we have to <laughs> stop that out. The evil. But it feels like he's not like reaching for yeah, much. They he just don't wants the love of his life. She seems uh, amenable she, to that. Exactly. I'm just saying, like, they don't really hammer it home that he's like a villain, right? I never really get that. Well, see, but uh, that's my issue with it, too. It's like if you're going to have, you know, Dracula is you. Well, but then again, again, it's the Barnabas Collins thing. Sure. Because the Christopher Lee Dracula is a bad guy. He's evil. Right. He's flat out evil. Bela Lugosi, evil. Right. But it's Barnabas Collins that they actually give like this kind of tortured past to. You have to understand the vampire. He doesn't really want to be a vampire. It's a curse that's been put up, put upon him right. by somebody else, and so he's you know he can't do anything about it. 
but uh, I mean, as someone who's never watched any of that, um, is he like a villain on the show? He kills people. Um, that's not. But it's that's not How what I'm are you asking. To feel that's about not it? what I'm it's, asking. Yeah. The reluctant vampire. There right. we go. Well, Coining the, a ter- let me ask: Who are the people he kills? Are they bad people? No. Is he a Dexter? Is he no. a Dexter right. type? Dexter. <laughs> no, he does the. Uh, I'm hungry, and so you cross my path, and boom. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, right. uh, he's still going to kill people, but sure. I mean, is he portrayed to the audience as a villain? It's probably more. Well, this is, uh, I suppose, where uh, Blackula also resides. Yes. The anti-hero. Yes. Yeah. He's like somebody that you, yeah, he kills people <laughs> and he's basically like an agent of evil because right. of his curse, but you still empathize with him and want him to succeed. Because sure, one of my biggest mission. problems with this movie is I'm not really rooting for anybody. I'm kind of rooting for Blackula. I'm not really rooting for the Van Helsing guy. Thalmus Rasulala? Yeah, Come on. That, Come on, him. Try yeah. Thalmus, Thalmus, Thalmus Rasulala. It's a fantastic. Rasulala. I'm just kind of rooting for everyone to go to the club and have a good time. Exactly. Like, right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, we're yes, not, yeah, that's we're, it. Yeah, exactly. Maybe. I don't think we're really with anybody, but we're just like, let's go to the club. <laughs> yeah. Like, Are that's we, the best option for everybody yeah. at this point. <laughs> yeah, like, what's Skillet doing? Like, let's yeah. find out. Yeah, let's explore <laughs> Skillet. What's yeah. Skillet doing? Yeah. What was what was that bomb ass line he said when he turned into a bat in front of the cops and peaced out? <laughs> he had like a nice like I'm I'm out of this bitch li- like sort of line. I don't remember I'm just what glad it was. He turned into a bat. I but was yeah. like, oh shit! All and right, he did it yeah. in front of people. He was he like, did. I'm out. And yeah, it was great. I'm glad he did. I wasn't. Was uh, I didn't think they were gonna go there. But yeah. he turned into a bat. And then that, <laughs> and then that woman, that woman bad. screaming, "That's a huge ass bat!" Yeah. <laughs> <It's> a bat. <laughs> Yeah, the movie ends up in like a power supply, uh, or no, it's a water a boiler power room. Or something. Yeah, yeah, they do this in like that is I, like the science a tropey, fiction. tropey, tropey trope of we always end up yeah. in a boiler room yeah. because I think, it, but I think it's that same room. It's like in, the, yeah. in every Star Trek episode or Westworld or whatever. If it's the future and you need pipes on the walls, you go to this place in Los Angeles right. and mm-hmm. shoot there. It's the same one from. Uh, Shocking Dark. I was going to say, it looked a lot like Shocking Dark. Yeah. Same one. And it even looked a little brighter. bit like 31, too. It was brighter than Shocking Dark. Definitely yeah. brighter than Shocking Dark, I yeah. think. But uh, it isn't ultimately the uh, the Van Helsing character or the cops that take down uh, Blackula. Well, they That's take what, down... Uh, he well, yeah, I don't. I mean, he tra- he he turns. Uh, I mean, he's he's yeah, going he, for Luva. Like that's his Tina. whole reason for this. And he grabs her and they get away. But then he's got like he's got every cop, every helmeted cop in the city on his ass. Yeah, going after him. And so they end up in the boiler room and everything. And one of the cops ends up shooting Luva like right in the back. Tina. <sighs> Tina is her actual name. Right. And so he ends up having to turn her. <laughs> In order to keep her alive, which was his plan all along. It was his plan anyway. Right, he but he was doodle. just about to, and then the cops right. busted him. Yeah. yeah, but she gets shot, so he's got to be like, <sighs> and yeah. then we don't see her later until, <laughs> until fucking uh, Rashulala. No, it was the it was the cop, the detective who, who stabbed her. Yeah, it was the detective, I think, because oh, yeah. uh, Rasulala had to pull the the right, coffin just, lid back, and they think Blackula is in there. And that cop is like, I'm going to stake. Like, you open it, I'm putting right. stake in. He ends up staking her. Yep. And she dies. Blackula yeah. is like. Yeah, because he had said earlier that her life was more important than his own. Right. Well, it's, but this is an interesting dynamic to the vampire story, right? And this may be the only one that I can think of where it kind of takes this turn. Because at some point, like, you know, they basically, they kill his bride. Yeah, his reason for living, whole reason, and you figure like this is the moment that he's gonna unleash the holy hell whoop ass on these characters, right? Yeah, he's gonna get the glow. Yeah, <laughs> he's, gonna, he's gonna fucking start taking people out. That's gonna happen. But <laughs> so as he's walking up on him, and they're backing away from him, and he's like, "Step back!" And they do because you know, I mean, sure. this guy tells you to stand back. You're gonna do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then you know, one dude's reaching for the crucifix that he's got in his pocket, and Blackula's like, "You don't need that." And then he turns around and walks off toward the sun. Yeah. Goddamn. In a uh, moment of self-sacrifice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. His love is gone. Yeah. His love is gone. I know. That surprised me. I guess I was expecting the big, you know, you got to kill the vampire. and Right. It's pretty, pretty fucking dramatic. I dig it, though. Like, I was, did not see that coming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Another move that makes him feel like not so evil. Yeah, yeah. Where he's just pretty like, selfless. I ca- yeah, I came for this yeah. thing. I, I'm, I'm only eating, like draining people's blood because I have to. Mm-hmm. Like it's a thing I need to do. Yeah. But I just really came for her. Now she's gone. 
eh, fuck this. All right. So your, off your the point then, mm-hmm. that you're making here might be that you can't really have a horror movie if you're not, if the bad guy isn't a bad, you know, all a bad guy. Well, we need someone to overcome something. It and- just, it, you can have a horror movie that is focused on a vampire. You're just going to make the bad guy someone else then. You know, yeah. someone has to be the bad guy. It doesn't have to be the vampire. You got to have someone right. be the bad guy, yeah. though. Like or, we I mean, under- there has to be some conflict. We uh, yeah. we kind of, I think, well, right. I think is because we kind of we understand everyone's uh, emotions and they're like what they're trying to do. Like I understand what Blackula is trying to do. I understand what the cop is trying to do. Like I'm kind of with what everyone's trying to do. Like there's no one I kind of disagree with in this movie. I understand all everybody's motivations. It's multi. Right, we're too yeah. we're too neutral. Mm-hmm. Right, I think so. Yeah. It's just yeah. like, all right, I get that. All right, I get that. Yeah. It's yeah. like there's no one I disagree with exactly. that I'm going Ex- against. Exactly. And I think that's yeah, that's, that's a it problem. just kind of goes with everybody. I mean, there's no yeah, it it, it there's it's lacking a direction in that area. Yeah. I think so. Like so. like you mentioned Dexter earlier. When mm-hmm. I watched Dexter, even though he's technically a bad guy, he's still the one I'm rooting for. Right. right. Like, it's, it's, yeah. it's a clear side. You can do yes. it. Yeah, yeah it it's a clear done. side. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But I'm just like, all right, cool. Everyone's kind of doing what they're supposed to be doing and you know, like I get yeah. it. So, yeah. I'm very understanding of No these one people. was good or bad enough to make yeah. a decision. Yeah, right. So. It feels like you almost need them. What you're saying is you needed a scene where there's a character that you actually like and care for that he kills. Right. <laughs> so, at least you can say, like, I get the threat that he poses. Right. Because we're introduced to, you know, innocent people, but like victims in a slasher movie, you barely get to meet them. And then, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Blackula goes and kills them in the dark room. Right. right. Like, yeah, like that her. was a pretty cool like, scene. It was, it was. I good. thought it still did some shock moments that worked. Yeah. Your vampires lunging out of coffins when you didn't expect mm-hmm. yes. him like behind a curtain going, Bruh. you know, I mean, for mm-hmm. a 1970s movie, it still had those moments. Right. That were like, mm-hmm. It had a couple that it were did. surprising. It did yeah. some things where I'm just like, Ugh. Mm-hmm. like again, her, the cabbie running down the hall. Yeah. And like I said, during the movie, like, you know, a curtain and some random dudes in your apartment going walking towards <laughs> yeah. you that would freak the shit out of that you that would be terrifying I was yeah terrifying yeah Ugh. so yeah I get it they did some good stuff in that regard surprisingly all right any uh, stray observations of bl- black or should we close this out Ooh. oh the, I did. the fashion is amazing of the time obviously but it is loud Loud, uh, wall Tina, to wall loud. Tina had some hooded. great outfits. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Everybody, they were great everybody looked good in this yeah. movie. She everyone came in with the hood great. at the beginning, right? Yeah. She, she did. Like, yeah. Everyone was looking good. I loved, that, good. loved yeah. that hooded outfit. That was cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those purple shoes. Yeah, everyone looked sharp. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sharp, top mm-hmm. to bottom. Mm-hmm. From teeth to feet, everyone was Man, looking sharp. It's just the seventies. I'm like thinking, you know, because I think of the Italian movies at the mm-hmm. time have like this keen fashion sense. But maybe it's just seventies in general. I think so. Yeah, but I think they take it to another level, even for it being on screen. Probably, you know. But, but back in the seventies, like everyone wore a suit to everything. Yeah, like, we've gone yeah. off and like we wear pajamas everywhere nowadays. Yeah, so, like, yeah it's Whenever true. everyone's wearing yeah. suits and dresses and just like looking good like, because yeah. they're like, I'm going outside of my house. Yeah. Yeah. I have to look good. Yeah, like, like that yeah, was the exactly. attitude. When you leave your house. Look, I'm literally wearing a, a hoodie and yoga pants right I'm now. I'm wearing, yeah, I'm wearing stretch pants yeah. too. So, okay. I mean, so, I have a dress shirt. Yeah. I know, I'm in a dress I, shirt, yeah, but I don't work. have a we fucking came from work. The tie. No, no, they would have a tie and a jacket. Uh, yeah. 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 If they were going to the grocery store. Like, this is, that was just what they did then. Yeah, I complain about having to wear business casual to work. I hate that. Right. Like, that kills me. I'm like, I should be able to wear whatever I want. It's, it's like, like my the, attitude. It's like the fucking Brady Bunch movie. And he's like, put on your Sunday best kids. We're going to Sears. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That was it. Uh, the, there's no way that will Wonderful. age poorly, right? Yeah. Oh, you know multiple, what, multiple levels. You know what happened there? At some point, people stopped wearing hats, and from there, it was all it downhill. Was, yeah, you had to true. put on a hat to go yeah. outside, yeah. or a yeah. veil, or yeah. whatever. Women wore the bonnets, and mm-hmm. those crazy things. Pill hats. Mm-hmm. It's a yeah. pillbox hat. Pillbox the hats. pillbox hat. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Lucy. And mm-hmm. furs. You could Stoles. argue You could argue Stoles. was yeah. when guys decided to stop wearing ties, because like... It's probably Ties, ties, I think, is important. Which went first, the hat or the tie? 
don't know. Okay. I'll bet the hat know. went first. And then the tie, because once you take tie. one off, you're like, well, then I really don't need this yeah. tie. And it was just yeah. open collar shit, and then the jacket was gone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then the it's... belt, and then the saggy pants, and it's all been done. With. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, this is how we would dress. This is clothes. This is how we sail the country. Right, yeah. Well, that was the Fred <laughs> Mertz era. I think. So, <laughs> <laughs> then, then anything else. But, uh, uh, but yeah, sure, that was, a, that was an element that went. Uh, yeah, I agree. <laughs> well, thank you for listening to this discussion. <laughs> Of black of how we went to hell. Yeah. All right. So I'll tell you what we're going to do, listener. We're going to answer some of your mail, and then we're going to talk a little bit more about black Hill because what you haven't heard, we've been talking around this, is what we actually thought individually of this movie and whether we would recommend it to you. So first of all, we're going to summon our mailman. Our mailman's name is Igor. Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. He's got a cape as well. Oh, he's a sharp dressed man. He is. He's always very sharply dressed. This must be a new development. I don't remember this in the past. I mean, he does. I think he like he wears junky shit. Like he's always in those like acid sure wash acid wash jeans are his like yeah. staple. But what, but like the acid came from his skin though. That's right. Like, that's what I'm saying. It came it's like it's just the it's a natural yeah. a natural thing that he secretes. Yeah, <laughs> he's a secreter. He started that trend, right? Oh. Yeah. The 80s. He started but, the acid, acid exactly. wash. Exactly. Like, Not he, many people know that he was like these are just my pants, and everyone kind of took it to but, the extreme. Yeah. Look at no, his purple suit and cape right now. Like he's looking. Good. Yeah, sure. going- I thought that was a pimp suit. <laughs> that means yeah. he's got the cane. He doesn't, yeah, yeah, he doesn't have the hat. He would need to get mad. It's because he's going out. That's the thing. Oh, right. yeah, yeah, he's dressed up. He and heard what we were saying. And he's got the cane yeah. because, I mean, he's got the limp, Colin. Don't yeah. Yeah. Uh, don't bring ooh, attention ooh. to it. He can smack down hoes with it if he wants to. Sure, yeah, but it's nice mostly yeah. because he's got to uh, walk. You know, cane? Okay. <laughs> Uh, Thank you, so Igor. <laughs> let's uh, remind people the, how you can reach Igor, and that's through Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Through Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. By email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Finding Cullen Milligan. Uh oh. <laughs> Sorry, She's Alexa listening. was going off again. Shut up, Alexa. <laughs> No, she probably she thinks her, her name's again. Igor. Uh, finding <laughs> Cullen Milligan writes in and says, "This talking about Blackula. This was one of the first horror films I saw as a kid, probably because my dad went to a Halloween party as the titular character. It's not the best vampire film by any stretch of the imagination, but the introduction is definitely something to see. I'm glad you guys are reviewing this film. It's a classic in the black exploitation subgenre. Who wrote that? Finding Cullen Milligan. All right, Cullen. I I have to ask this, and I'm I, I'm sorry. I have to ask this. I know what you're going to ask. <laughs> Are you black? I, I just want to make sure, because you said your dad went as the titular character, so I just I just want to make sure. Because otherwise it'd just be Dracula, right? For, well, well, no, 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 no. No, otherwise I it mean, may not be Dracula. I'm assuming the best. Right. Not let, the worst. Well, we can assume that. I just want to make can, sure. You can still do the outfit and the wig and right. still be black. Yeah. Yeah. I just want a little more specifics to your story. Yeah. That's all I'm looking for. I, thank you I appreciate for you for writing. writing no, but that's cool though. Like, could you imagine if you had a dad that was into right, like cult dad, movies like this? Right. It, like, yeah. If my dad told me he dressed up as like somebody from the 1970s, from like a whatever. not mainstream and, movie right. at all. Yeah. yeah I'd be like, wow, you know awesome. that why? Job, dad. It's because Blackula was one of the top grossing films of right? 1972. Was it really? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it was that's a huge awesome. deal back then. Yeah. That's awesome. And I'm like, was this? Did you see it in the drive-in, or was it actually in theater? I mean. I suppose in smaller towns uh, or cities, uh, theaters and uh, sure. smaller towns. I mentioned but even everywhere. still, that was a time when you had to build costumes from memory. You know, you couldn't like like Google what the costume in Black Yellow looked like back then. So like, well, that was a mo- then these were multiple time viewers. Then maybe that's what I'm saying like, like building a costume from memory. I mean, or, this is you know, uh, pretty uh, impressive. A black exploitation horror crossover like that feels like it would do. Big money. It did big. Mm-hmm. It's like, the big birth, money. I think it's the birth of uh, black horror. Yeah, cinema. if it feels but, like it's early yeah. enough, and like yeah, this was a big one. Mm-hmm. And it was followed. We said before, Scream, Blackula Scream with yes. Pam Greer, the star of Coffee, mm-hmm. and was, Foxy Brown, which Foxy we've also Brown. covered on this show. If we you go did. back, uh, was the following year, mm-hmm. nineteen seventy. Awesome. Okay. Nice. It never was a Blackula three. Nope. There was a Blackenstein. And uh, uh, Dr. Black. Was there ever a black wolf man? Dr. Black and Mr. Hyde. Dr. Black and Mr. Hyde. No. I don't think. Wait. Got everything else, but not a black wolf man? That's. Well, there was no black mummy either. 
Well, well with that, you're also bandages. covered. So <laughs> just, I'm sure there's no black invisible man either, Colin. Damn it. But... <laughs> Damn it. You may be right. <laughs> and would they just label them black invisible man? Yeah, like, probably. How, how do you title these the invisible yeah. black man? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. The invi- uh, well, well, there was, uh, what, Fred Williamson, Black Caesar, I think, was black like. Caesar. Was, you know, right. It was the black Scarface or whatever. They just, mm-hmm. that's what they did. Sure. Mm-hmm. I, which I remember, I think, uh, wasn't there an issue with um, the movie Black Christmas, uh, they uh, they changed the name to Silent Night, Deadly Night, or something like that because before, they okay. thought at, in 1974 that everybody would assume that that was a, a black exploitation. Wow, movie. yeah, that's interesting. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. All right, so we're gonna now go. I want to see Black Christmas. Yeah, I was like, I'm kind of down for that <laughs> what, movie you've though. Seen black Christmas. No, no, I want to see oh, Black oh, Christmas. Like, like black exploitation. <laughs> that's what I want to see. Yeah. I want to see Black Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Well, B-Movie Poster Vault writes in and says, Blackula is a film that really punches well above its weight. Really great performance from William Marshall, adding so much gravitas to what could have been nothing more than a cheap black exploitation ripoff. I'm looking at you, Blackenstein. It even manages to have a pretty solid sequel, which is even more remarkable. Uh, so we're going to go around the room and find out what everybody thought of Blackula. Starting- Michaela. Michaela. You got it right this time. I did. I've Good gotten, job. I've gotten well it done. all. Michaela, what did you think about Blackula? So coming off of just have having watched a uh, horror noir, which is a really good horror documentary, definitely gotta check it out. I, it was even better than I expected. And where can you, you find it, Michaela? Uh, on Shutter. Shutter, please sponsor us. We're <laughs> oh, yeah, we're, name, do, we're yeah. name dropping you for free right now. Um, uh, I mean, I watch a lot of horror documentaries, even bad ones. I like still enjoy because I'm taking in information I didn't know. But like horror noir is actually really well made and pairs people together to talk about things that I didn't expect. Um, I think they're uh, one of the editors of the one of the new editors of Fangoria produced it. Phil Noble Jr. Mm. I think he's I think the so. managing editor of mm-hmm. Fangoria now. Mm-hmm. I think he produced one of the producers on it. So it's got some like heft behind it. Right. Yes. So after seeing that and seeing them talk at length about Black Eel, I was really excited to watch it tonight. And I loved it. I was super into it. Uh, it was definitely way more exciting than Dracula AD 1972. <laughs> I think I, that movie, I was expecting more to be like this. Oh. Uh, so I was super into the music. I was into like, I mean... It's a movie from the 70s. It doesn't move at the same pace as movies now, but it has enough interesting things that it doesn't really matter. Um, loved the acting. Loved the set dressing, the costume design. Everything was really... There was always something interesting happening at some point. Um, the, like, photo development, like, light room kill was really cool. Uh, I, I, I just really liked it. I thought it was a really good take on the Dracula story that Colin brings every couple of months. <laughs> 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 this is probably been, <laughs> this is Boy, probably been my favorite your one. Number. Yeah, it's probably been my favorite one so far. Uh, I would, I mean, it's it's a time capsule, you know. I don't think we'll ever get a movie like this again. Um, it was a period in time that it's fun to go back and visit. So I would definitely recommend it, Sean. Uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun watching yeah. this tonight. This was uh, this was really good. Um, I think. Excuse me. All the uh, uh, all the actors in the movie. I think everyone uh, kind of brought it in this one. Um, there's a lot to like about this. The music is great. The, I mean, the, just the titles alone to start mm-hmm. this movie. Like that's a good starter for this. That like they put a lot of effort into it. Um, it's it's well directed. I like uh, uh, William Marshall. Uh, he's I think he's really good at this. Um, I I want to watch Scream Blackula Scream despite what I don't know what Colin feels about the sequel and everything but it's got him it's got Pam Greer like it's it looks and it's, voodoo and voodoo it, like that looks <laughs> like I feel it's gonna follow a similar path I'm up for watching the the next one in this how is he not doing like voiceover work all the time was right? Marshall he like he's got he that beautiful velvety he voice he like, should have like, like, he was a lot of cartoons I would yeah. voice is amazing he's so. like a poor man's Keith David. Kind of. I mean, I think he's I in his own category. Good. I think he's got a lot going for yeah, him. Voice um, is great. He was he was really good. Um, this is just, it was a fun movie. I liked the places it went. Um, it it freaked me out. There was a lot of freaky stuff in this. Where I'm just like, a I wasn't expecting it, and b it's just like it's 
creepy. Like I said, the hallway scene with the cabbie where she's running down, that freaked me out. The dark room scene. So there's a lot of stuff to this movie that was really good that I was not expecting because again, I didn't know we would go to uh, quote unquote current day Los Angeles and have Blackula running around and kind of interacting with people. So um, it was unexpected. I didn't know what was going to happen but I was uh, surprised and delighted by what I got tonight. So I recommend Blackula. It was very good. Holly. Um, yeah, I had I had seen this movie before, um, so I knew what I was in for. It'd been a while. Um, I, I I do have to say that with, when you watch this movie, you have to be aware of the seventies pace because it is a it is a slow burn in the seventies with most movies. Um, and I don't think this is much different. I, I think that there's a lot of good stuff, but it is still a slow movie. With that, as long as you have that in mind, the rest of it is pretty awesome. It's like, like Michaela and Sean said, like the style, the there's some really great kills, the the music, it's it's entertaining as hell. It's it's a lot of fun to watch. Um so as long as you remember that it is a product of the seventies, keep that in mind when you're watching it. Um it's it's really worth watching for sure. I like it a lot. Um yeah, I think it's fun. Definitely recommend Blackula for sure. Colin. All right. Well, so I'm going to be the lone dissenting voice. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh. I was like, you all brought right. this. <laughs> you got me. You yeah. got me. You got all of us. I was just like, what the fuck, Colin? Yeah. No way. No, I mean, I've always been a fan of this movie, but, you know, obviously I have uh, an affinity for Dracula. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a Dracula story in all of its That's what forms. Out, yes. Um, so I had seen this uh, a long time ago, liked it, but not really um, loved it, right? And I have seen it since where it was kind of slow to me. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I get it because it's the 70s. And I think, you know, what Holly's saying, I think for a modern viewer, you know, with our familiarity with vampire uh, lore and how these stories go, because, I mean, it's right by the book pretty much yeah. all the way to the end where the end does something different. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, but up until then, it's like you are ahead of the movie. Um so you got to kind of take that in mind. You have to kind of watch this with the eyes, which was how I uh, was watching it tonight. You know, um, the eyes of somebody like, where does it stand in history? You know? And uh, when you see it that way, I, you know, I was ex- tonight was the best experience that I've had with the movie. Um, I was interested. Like I was thinking about uh, this while we were watching it tonight. Right. Um, the year as we're uh, watching or uh, uh, talking about this, uh, the movie black Panther is up for an Academy award. This is by the time you heard hear this, it is either one or, or not, but, <laughs> <laughs> it's very true. So I've been sitting there saying, you know, like uh, there's a, you know, I'm like Black Panther is up for an Academy Award. And this like blows me away because it's like a Marvel movie. And like, you know, it's not better than some of the other Marvel movies, in my opinion. Right. It's a right. good movie. Most of those movies it's, are it's not my but, favorite Marvel movie. Right. Yeah, I agree. with you. But here's so I've been kind of like, why is this movie you know nominated for an Academy Award? Um, and I'm like, well, there's been other, you know, uh, African American superheroes throughout time. And you think of like, you know, Blade, or you think of uh, uh, Steel, or you know, I mean, you know, Steel. Uh, wow, I haven't or, thought of that movie yeah. in a while. Well, I'm not saying top tier. And Kazam. No, yeah. I get what you're saying. But, I get what you're saying. Right? And Kazam. I just <laughs> obviously. I sure. had this realization had as I was watching. All, almost all of them, Shaq. <laughs> yeah, but I had a realization as I was watching this movie tonight that, um, and even though I appreciate, you know, uh, these characters, I mean, I like Blade and, you know, Black, he's basically the 90s version of this character, sure. right? I suppose the vampire, uh, they're all anti heroes, except for Black Panther. Black Panther is the first, like, true blue. Uh, African American or African, sorry. Uh, uh, I was going to say character. Black Panther's yeah, African. He's okay. African. <laughs> uh, black character, um, and so I mean, I guess that does give it like a you know like a, a cultural heft in in a way that's like you know uh, something different than the rest. It's like I you know I I like the other characters, but I get that you know we are still saying that Blackula is a a demonic creature. Even though he is, you know, uh, deli- you know, driven by his love of his wife and this loss, and you know, we have sympathy for him, it's like there's still this other part of him that's like this evil thing. And yeah, you know, I think that a lot of these characters ultimately have done this, you know, throughout um, uh, cinema history. So, um, 
That being said, I still appreciate movies like Blackula because obviously, you know, uh, being a vampire fan, I think, uh, you know, when you go back and look at this, especially like I was trying to lay out before the um, just the the influx. I mean, if you go back and look at this era, you're going to see a lot of vampire movies all kind of doing the the same thing, uh, bringing the vampire into the modern day. And to me, this one is uh, an above average version of that story. And I think, you know, just for its historical significance is kicking off the, uh, the black horror boom. I think you should definitely go back and you got to at least see it, you know, watch it, see where, you know, like trends come from and all that. So I'm talking way too much. <laughs> You got it. Well, I'm going to say that you should see Blackula. Uh, check it out. Uh, we never did find out who the band was who had three songs in the movie, but uh, once we maybe we'll post that on uh, sure on well, social yeah, we'll, media. We'll post something about the band. Yeah. After I go fish the CD out, like as soon as <laughs> yeah, we hit yeah, the stop say, button, you're going to have to go find it over there. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, four recommendations for Blackula. You know what that means? It means you should check out Blackula. Yep. And next week, we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by... Holly. Mm. Holly, what are we watching next week? Well, I'm kind of taking a cue from Colin Uh-oh. and taking a, uh, a classic monster with another genre. We're going sexploitation, and we're going to watch Frankenhooker. Huh? I've, never right. I've never seen it. I've never seen it either. I've always heard, wanted uh, to. Heard great yep. things about it. Yeah. All right. Wait, how many movies? Okay, the, right, cin- yeah. <laughs> the cinema of Frank Hennenlauter. I was just saying Hennenlauter, yeah. Yeah, Basket Case. Did we do that on the show? We did Basket Case. Okay, on we did the Basket show. Case. And now, all right, he's working his way toward the wall of fame. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, well, all right. So thank you for joining us on this journey. Uh, and next week, it's uh, uh, we're going to be watching Frank and Hooker. So until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.